Hey, Chatterbox, you yeah, hear me? Well, I've got something very, very interesting, very interesting for you guys tonight. You know what I mean? Something that I want us to talk about in the comment section. You understand what I mean? I say? This is really, really, it's a really controversial story, guys. You know what I mean? In my views, if you're going to teach the Bible or follow the Bible, follow it well. You know what I mean? Follow the word of God. Don't pick and choose what bit is important from what bit is not important. You know what I mean? All the word of God is important. You know what I mean? All the rules that is set for us to follow is important. There's no chop and change. There's no chop and change. You know what I mean? What he says in the Bible. Yeah? He's the only begotten son. You understand what I say? Whosoever believe in me should not perish, but have everlasting life. You understand me? I'm not against people, family. I'm not against people. I'm not one of them people that hate what people does. You know what I mean? You do what you want to do. But if you want to follow the word of God, just follow the word of God. You understand me? Look at this one now. This pastor, he got botched. He got cancelled for his belief, which is the right belief. Let's get straight into it, guys. The GB News presenter, writer and political commentator Calvin Robinson, a man of deep religious faith, intellect and integrity, has had his proposed ordination to become a priest cancelled by the Church of England. Doesn't sound very Christian to me. Calvin's cancellation is not because he's broken any of the Ten Commandments. He's not murdered, stolen or coveted his neighbour's not to the best of my knowledge anyway. His great crime is that he has traditional conservative views. He also spoke out against COVID restrictions, including churches closing their doors to parishioners during the pandemic. He has called out gender ideology, which questions the idea of biological sex, and he's rigorously pro-traditional family values. In other words, he's been canceled by the Church of England for having the wrong opinions. Now, I genuinely struggled with this one. Uh, I've struggled sleeping this week, actually. I don't get stage fright. I never get nervous when I go on television. I recently debated at the Cambridge Union and the Durham Union, no problem whatsoever. But this, there's something different about this one. It's been causing me anxiety. So someone kindly sent me Luke chapter 12, verses 11 to 12, saying, And when they bring you before the synagogues and the rulers and the authorities, do not be anxious about how you should defend yourself and what you should say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. This is Calvin Robinson, a British man who is a deacon in the Free Church of England. Robinson opens his speech stating that he is uniquely nervous about giving this particular speech. When we hear the things he says, we will understand why. Why do I feel anxiety about this? Well, we are up against the authorities, three bishops from the established church. Robinson here is referring to bishops from the official Church of England apologizing to the LGBTQ community and vowing to support its agenda. I'm really pleased it's changing for my, you know, gay friends. I'm really pleased. And no, it's not enough for some, and I'm really sorry it's not. You know, we've spent so much time listening and working with people across a whole range of diversities. It has brought us to a new knowledge and a new place of humility before God, before church, before the world, where we can say, yes, we got it wrong. And we're not saying, by the way, we think we've got it right now, but we are saying, this is a good place. To... And I wasn't expected to get emotional. But... The word of God never changes, guys. The word of God never changes. It's only we as human change. You understand me? The Bible was not put there to adapt to how we feel. You understand me? It wasn't put there for that. The word of God wasn't put there for us to chop and change meaning of the Holy Bible. Let's keep going. But I have, because I think it puts the Church of England in a better place. And I really hope that we can hold together our unity. And I cry out for those who, who hate what we're doing and say, we want to hold you together in this. But this is the fullest pastoral provision that we can offer at the moment without changing legislation, which would take years anyway, years and years. In an open letter, we together apologise for the pain, hostility, exclusion and rejection that LGBTQI people have experienced within the church. We realise that this behaviour has not reflected the universal love of God for all people. We know that we need to change. 
So Robinson is anxious because he is about to stand up to some of the most powerful and influential religious figures in his country. That means either I am wrong and Christians have been teaching incorrectly for the last 2,000 years or and Jews and Christians for the last four to 6,000 years or we have church leaders attempting to drag the church into apostasy. Neither way is good. This is exactly what we are facing in the United States as well where we have one of the largest megachurch pastors in the country supporting the idea that homosexuality is essentially as immutable as race and apologizing to the LGBTQ community. A gay person who still wants to attend church after the way the church has treated the gay community? I'm telling you, they have more faith than I do. How should we as Christians respond to this kind of compromise from prominent Christian leaders? Well, let's see what Robinson says about all of this. There's a growing number of vocal bishops who want to change the church's teaching on marriage. The result being the spiritual neglect of Anglicans up and down this country. St. Paul describes marriage as, Therefore a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. In which he is mirroring the language of Genesis, where God tells man and woman to be fruitful and multiply. Both Aquinas and Paul refer to matrimony as a sacrament, a holy mystery in which one man and one woman are joined together in conjugal union with the potential to be blessed by the grace of God with children to start a family for the worship of God. The definition of marriage is extremely important, and it is an issue that Christians should not and cannot compromise on, because the definition of marriage relates directly to the gospel itself. We see in Ephesians chapter 5, for example, that marriage is not just for procreation and also for sanctification, this righteous outlet for human sexual desires, but it's also for illustration. This beautiful picture of the relationship between Jesus Christ and his bride, the church. People will often argue in this debate, we know more about homosexuality now than we did then. Maybe so. But are we really going to suggest that God knew less then than we know now? For either all of scripture is God-breathed or it isn't. Either we believe Christ or we don't. Robinson brings up a good point here. Are we going to trust what God has clearly revealed in Scripture? Or are we going to believe modern claims about homosexuality that are actually unsubstantiated? Because everybody knows that that's how people are born, right? We have the LeVay brain study, you know, uh, Bailey, Bailey and Pillard's twin study. We have Hamer's X chromosome study. You know, we've got uh, Savick's pheromone study. Uh, so, of course, I mean, all of these things, by the way, none of these things, none of these things, none of these things has proven a genetic connection to homosexuality. And even if it did, it wouldn't matter. 2,000 years of Christian doctrine cannot be altered at the whim of a few liberal bishops. What is God-ordained cannot be adjusted to suit our new liberal progressive views. Right. Marriage is heterosexual and monogamous and should be open to the possibility of children. The Bible backs all of this up. It's very clear throughout on this matter, whether it's nine verses or 32,000 verses. Marriage is between one man and one woman for the purposes of procreation. Sex outside of marriage is a sin, and that is the same for heterosexuals as it is for homosexuals, mm. although the Bible is quite clear that same-sex relations are abhorrent. Robinson is unapologetically honest and straightforward about what Scripture plainly teaches. This is refreshing, considering just how apologetic so many Christians are regarding this subject today. The family dismiss this, this, this misinformation of God's word, it's not right. Misinformation of the Bible, it's not right. Not because we feel and want something, that don't mean we can change the word of God. You understand me? No one didn't say God hate people that don't follow the rules of God. No, nothing like that. But he also want us to repent our sins and come unto him. You understand me? Repent and come forward to him and he will forgive us. He will forgive you. He will forgive anyone for whatever wrong they're doing. That don't mean you are doing something and you're thinking now thousands of years of Bible is wrong. It is wrong. It is not wrong. That's in my views. Let's keep going. 
Well, you know, I think I have an important voice, but I'm very, I think I've been good. I think part of my, if you want to call it success, is I've stayed in my lane, and my lane is lifting people's spirits, and there are, there are issues that good Bible-believing people see on both sides of the fence. And before some smart Alec starts asking me the question of whether I'm wearing mixed fabrics, there is a difference between the moral laws and ceremonial laws, and Christ did come to fulfill the old laws. Both the issues of marriage and homosexuality, however, are still addressed in the New Testament, in Paul's epistles, but also in the Gospels. Jesus does talk of marriage in Mark and Matthew, both in the context of heterosexual union. Either Robinson has watched Pastor Vody's sermon on this same subject, or he just happens to make the exact same correct arguments. I pick and choose because I understand that there are three different types of law. There's moral law, there's civil law, and there's ceremonial law. Yeah. Jesus did address homosexuality. Uh, he addressed it in Matthew chapter 5 and in Matthew chapter 19. Because in Matthew chapter 5 and Matthew chapter 19, he addressed the issue of marriage. So my question to the bishops would be, do we not believe in the authority of scriptures anymore? Can we pick and choose which parts of the gospel we adhere to? The church, after all, is Christ's bride, as we heard earlier. Jesus is described as the bridegroom, so that we may know how he relates to us. Two grooms would be pointless. Christ is already in union with the Father and the Holy Spirit. It's us he's inviting in. Two brides is what we're looking at here. The church is attempting to marry itself and to leave Christ out of the picture. We are directly talking about undermining God's plan as he has revealed it to us. We're replacing his authority with our own. If marriage is no longer between one man and one woman, are we open to the idea of polygamy? We disregard the heterosexual aspect, so why not the monogamous aspect too? If love is love, as we keep hearing, who's to say that three men loving each other is not more love than two men loving each other? <laughs> Shame, Even more than normalizing things like polygamy, the love is love movement is even starting to argue that pedophiles are merely minor attracted persons. We know how oh, man, how can you say that? How can you say that? A pedophile is is the is a pedophile meant to be in the pits of hell. A pedophile. They're not wanted. They're not wanted around. Molesting our little kids and all these things. You're not wanted around. So how can you want to change what God says in the Bible? This is this is this is like unconceivable this is for me. And it's no, these things aren't true. That pedophilia Barish. is somehow okay. Because we're minor attracted persons. Right. And I'm sure someone in this chamber has echoed the words love is love tonight. And this is not about love being love. This is about marriage, the sacrament of holy matrimony. It is directly connected to love, but it's not the definition of love. Too many people utter those words and confuse the meaning of love. Agape, the biblical context of love, is a divine love. It's a sacrificial love. It's not lustful. People often conflate sex with love. It's very disingenuous. We've heard quite a bit of that. But then, of course, atheists often parrot the words, God is love, and we've heard that one tonight too, again, without any understanding. Yes, God is love, but he sets the terms, not us. Mm -hmm. The definition of love That's it. is not nearly as simple as most people present it That's to be. It. We need to understand how God has defined the word love. There's about 30 students here. It's really possible that 30 students have 30 different definitions on what holy is, 30 definitions of what love is, 30 definitions of what just is. So by putting those names up there, we've done nothing unless we define those terms biblically. Another one we've heard plenty of is inclusivity. Should the church be more inclusive? Again, it's a play of words. It's, it's virtue signaling. It's to appear good rather than to be good. The church should absolutely be inclusive. Christ spent time with tax collectors and prostitutes, but it is they who went away changed, not Christ. We are fallen, therefore we are all sinners. The church is open to sinners, of course it is, that's the purpose of the church. But it should not be to encourage people to continue to sin. Our duty as clerics is to help lead people to Christ, to lead them away from sin, not to embrace it, not to affirm it. I know many LGBT people who live lives in Christ. They abstain from sexual gratification to be closer to God, and it's not easy, it really isn't. It's perhaps not fair, but it is right and it is good. And these people are being let down. I've had people crying, saying, I could have got married, but I did what the church taught me was right. And now the church is saying they were wrong all along. I've wasted my life. It's absolutely tragic that so many supposed church leaders are deceiving and confusing people with teachings that are not at all biblical. 
I love a congregation that recognize that God is gay, that God is a lesbian, that God is bi, that God is trans, that God is gender non-binary, that God is black, that God is white, that God is Middle Eastern and Asian, that God is differently abled mentally and physically, that God is able-bodied. In short, that God is as we are because we are all a reflection of God's divine image. However, the faith is inherently discriminatory. God is discriminatory. He sets conditions on us entering his heavenly kingdom. It is not a free-for-all. We must turn away from sin, repent, and follow Christ. This is the key part of the gospel message that is not preached by so many of the most popular pastors in the world today. Joel Osteen teaches that gay people will be accepted in heaven, but Osteen says absolutely nothing about repentance and turning away from sin. Will a gay person be accepted into heaven as you see it? Well, I believe they will. So as I wrap up, my message to the opposing side is do not lead us astray. Do not lead people astray. Do not be the wolves in sheep's clothing. Do not be the false teachers that the Bible warns us about. Remember your obligation to defend the faith. Stop teaching about diversity, inclusion, and equality, and get back to teaching about redemption and salvation. This is spiritual neglect. Indeed, the campaign for social justice and equity has oftentimes become a replacement for the gospel and in fact, arguably, destroys the very message of the gospel itself. Again, this is not me. This is the Oxford Dictionary of the English Language. And it says social justice is distributive justice. It's distributive justice. And specifically in politics and philosophy, it's justice at the level of a society or a state as regards possession of wealth, commodities, opportunities, and privileges. That's what social justice means. That's not what I say social justice means. That's what the Oxford Dictionary of the English Language says social justice yeah, right. means. The church is imploding and the faithful masses have stopped turning up on Sundays and we are seeing the most rapid decline of Christianity in this country that we may have ever seen. Do not accelerate it with heresy. You do not have the authority to bless sin. When I hear the Bishop of London on record saying these new prayers will mean priests can bless same-sex relationships, some of which may be sexual in nature, I hear the devil at work. Bishops are promoting the idea of sacramental sodomy. Let them be anathema. Repent. Robinson is absolutely right to call out the bishops within his church blessing the LGBTQ movement. These leaders need to repent of leading church members down the path of destruction. And to the rest of you, I have no doubt that some- Pally, that'd be nice. Set up, please, I'm begging you. We're watching something very important here. Okay, is that all right with you, Mike? Let's just finish this, okay? Some of you will consider me a bigot or a transphobe or a homophobe, but I am neither of those things, none of those things. I am simply a follower of Christ, a Christian. And we are naturally countercultural. And if so called liberals were truly diverse and tolerant, they would embrace us just as they embrace everyone else. And the, not right now, I'm just wrapping up. And the point has been made, but the growing Christophobic attitude around this public debate and the ugly level of, of hypocrisy is that we really see people hold Muslims and people of other faiths to the same expectations that they hold Christians to. Who is calling, except my good friend here, for Islam to embrace gay marriage? Who is calling for the Quran to be updated to modern societal norms. It is the same patronizing attitude of people of other, that treat other faiths, patronize other faiths while being intolerant towards Christians at the same time. It's a shame, but in the words of St. Athanasius of Alexandria, if the world is against the truth, then I am against the world. Thank you very much. So guys, you see what I'm saying though? We just have to have horror beliefs. You know what I mean? God don't hate anybody. He don't hate, he don't hate. You know what I mean? God is love. As everyone is gonna say, God is love, God is love. You don't shun no one. If you know what you're doing is wrong, pertaining to the to God's word, you have to be the one that's supposed to be held accountable for what you're doing and what you've done. And you're supposed to know that from the bottom of your heart. If you believe that there's a God, you should follow his words and hold him highly in your heart and mind and prayers. Family, Dr. Cookie, Real Chatterbox. Here's another one again. Like, comment, share. Tell me what you think in the comment section. And let's talk about this. Have a lovely rest of even families. Thank you for the support. We're going again. Polly was just being messing up the thing tonight. Look, first you're making being nice like this. We're so sorry, guys. Polly, we're out.